Well, here we are again, folks. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. We already covered this week one time. We covered some Psalms. We covered Psalm 22, 23, 24. I want to face it now at a different aspect. There are many aspects that you can face the Psalms, and they mean many different things. And they, they, they are actually, you can do one whole series on a Psalm on one subject. Turn around, take the same exact psalm, and do another series. We're going to talk about the names of the Lord that are in Psalm 23. And there are many names of the Lord God of Heaven in Psalm 23. Uh, is an excellent source of de devotional material. One thing that we know, all of the psalms are excellent sources of uh uh, uh, devotional material on a daily basis. If you would read a psalm every day as well as a proverb, you know if you read a proverb every day, you read through the proverbs once a month, uh, both uh, for reading and meditation. Meditation is a very, very good thing. To meditate on that which you've read. And when you're reading the psalms, you can meditate. I'm believing that when David wrote the Psalms that he wrote. He had a lot of uh, what, what you call muse in there. He had a lot of places where he mused about those. I'm on the YouTube now. I'll call you back. Uh, so he's had a lot of those places where he stopped and he mused or he paused and he thought about it and he meditated. Uh, one example uh, that's sufficient for the reader's appetite uh, would be the exploration. Uh, and, and I've been studying Hebrew poetry. In Hebrew poetry, to study the inspirational poems of the Psalms, some of the Psalms are actually poetry. And to study them that way, and it, it's interesting because... I've studied the different aspects of Hebrew poetry, and I'm not educated enough to go back and tell you those aspects. But there are three different aspects that are studied three different ways. And some of these guys that wrote in that Hebrew poetry type writing uh, wrote in the settings of three different, three different settings in one sign. And you could find them if you look for them. Uh, let's see. Psalm 22, uh, we see Christ as a substitute. And if you read Psalm 22, you're going to see Christ as a substitute. Uh, fivefold prayer of the Messiah. And uh, you're going to see uh, twenty uh, fold glory and excitation of the Messiah. And this is in chapter 22. Now, uh, it is the fifth Masonic psalm uh, that talks about the Messiah. It's the fifth one that talks about the Messiah and the chief musician uh, that came and the psalm of David. Um, it talks about 27 different sufferings of the Messiah that you're going to see when you come up to Jesus. And it's written in this psalm David wrote right here. Those 27 things are in this psalm. Now we're going to come over in again back to the psalm we've been in uh, many times uh, as he's seen as the shepherd. Psalm 24, now God is seen as the shepherd. Psalm 23, excuse me. He is seen as the shepherd. 24, he appears as the sovereign God. The sovereign God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He is sovereign. He is everywhere there is. He is. He is the sovereign God. The character of God's people are to be uh, with Him. And uh, then we see seven prayer distresses, a psalm of David. He had twelve requests to God in Psalm 25. But we're going to back up to 24, and we're going to see him as appearing as a sovereign. This psalm deals with the past, deals with the present, 
and it deals with the future. Past, present, and future. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, the past was at the law and the way it worked. The present was uh, the fact that he knew God was present with him at all times. He was prepared to die. He was prepared in many things. We're going to see that as we look at the names that we're going to dig out of Psalm 23. And then the future was the cross. In the present, we have the table and the furniture. Uh, in the past, we had the table of showbread. And uh, then we had uh, the, the cross came along, and now the crown. Now we await the crown. We have gone through the cross, and now we await the crown, which the crown will come at the end. Now, Psalm 23 gives us this, the secret of a happy life. The secret of a happy life is found in this sign. Uh, first thing is, we can find out a happy death. Verse 4. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You can have a happy death. If you're in Christ, you can have a happy death. Death does not have to be the enemy that causes you a wicked hard time or a hard life. So death can be happy. Let's look at the eternity, 5 through 6. Thou preparest me a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. Well, not only is the present all the days of his life going to walk with him, but he is going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> and that's our sign too, by the way. It is, it is the he and the me sign. The he and the me. He and me. He, God, and me. He, God, and me. Whoa, this is wonderful. You know you're listening to a man who has no running education. No real education. But I've learned by studying books, good books, and uh, things. There are personal pronouns running through it from the beginning to the end. There are personal pronouns in this sign from the beginning to the end. It is heartwarming also to see how the personal pronouns for the shepherd change from the third person, he... To the second person, thou. He changed from the third person, he, and became sovereign or close enough so there's no longer he, it is thou. I'm talking in the presence of God. I was talking about him as he is my shepherd. And now I've come down to thou. Thou art the one. <laughs> And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou art with me. Wow. First he was, now it's thou. Thou art with me. Wow. And uh, in these verses which speak of the danger of death, uh, as if suggested that the Lord is especially near his own. He's especially near his own. At such a time as death. At such a time as death, God is especially close to his own. And to carry them through that door. you got to remember, your spirit is going to heaven. And it's going to pass through. I'll call you back, I'm on the tube. Uh, and and it, it will come back through uh, it, his spirit is going to go with us. we got to go up through the uh, spirits of the devil. Uh, the great uh, angels of the devils that are in that prince and power of the air. And our spirit and our soul has got to pass through there. And I'm sure an angel of the Lord came and carried the beggar to heaven. The Bible said, The rich man died in hell. He lifted up his eyes, being in torment and flame. But the angels came and carried Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. The angels carried him through 
the good angels carried him through the bad angels and carried him through. Hey, many of the great Jehovah titles are embedded in Psalm 23. Let's see how they're embedded. Let's see what they are. A careful reading of the psalm will discover him as this, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Let's go over to Genesis and chapter 22 and 14 and see what it says. Chapter 22 and verse 14 and see what it says. And Abraham, this is Abraham now, remember Abraham? God's called man who was Abram. And now he's Abraham. He's called uh, the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said unto this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh. It shall be seen. He called it that. Uh, Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. And then we see Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is my banner. Or the Lord is my shepherd. But the Lord is my banner. Let's look at that. In Exodus 17. In Exodus 17 and, and, um, and 15. Exodus 17 and 15. Uh, 17 and 15. Let's find it, find it, find it. 14, 13, 14, 15. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is my banner. Wow. He built the altar there and he knew God was his banner. And then look at, let's look at Exodus 15, 26. Jehovah Raphi. Jehovah Raphi. And that is in Exodus 15, 26. You might ought to pause or back up and find these scriptures. Write them down. Get your Bible out. Flip through the pages. Find out where you are. Can you find Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges? Can you find them? Can you go through the Bible? Do you know how? You need to learn if you do not know how. Verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And I've read the wrong verse. I'm supposed to be in Exodus and I'm supposed to be in 15 and verse 26. And I believe that I read the right verse. I did. And the voice of the Lord thy God said, I am the Lord. And th this is what we're looking at. We're supposed to be looking at the Lord that healeth. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth. That's my problem. I wasn't listening to or looking at what I was reading. The Lord thy God will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. And all right. I'm on the YouTube. I got five more minutes, okay? I'll call you right back. All right. And so, uh, here we are. And uh, we are in, okay. I got so much going on here. Jehovah Tiskanu. Tiskanu. The Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. In Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23, um, wait a minute, Judges in 6.24, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, Judges 6 and 24. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom 
Under this day, it is yet in offer of the Abrazites. Now, Gideon, that was an interesting man. Gideon, God came and visited him and said, Thou great man of valor. Gideon was a young man. He was hiding, hiding behind his shed, uh, thrashing up some wheat, trying not to make any dust. Because the Philistines were down there in the valley looking up, looking around. If they could have seen any dust, they'd have came and stole the food. And Gideon's out there hiding. And he's, he's doing that. <coughs> and, and the Lord comes directly to him and says, Hey, Gideon, thou great man of valor. Oh, Gideon's looking around. He's saying, A great man of valor, who is that? And, and uh, he, he couldn't uh, quite recall or quite see who God was talking to. Let's see. We got to go to Jeremiah now. Okay, we're going to Jeremiah uh, twenty-three and six. We're at Jeremiah twenty-three and verse six. Let's see what that says. And it says this: In his day, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord. Our righteousness. Wow. This is talking about all the way up into the millennial reign where it's going to be called the Lord, our righteousness. And that's Jehovah Tis, and it's a little hard to pronounce, but it's Tisk in you. And then we've got Jehovah, Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. Man. And that's in Ezekiel 48:35. Ezekiel, we're still going forward, see? 39, 40, 46, 48. 48 and 35. So 48 and 35. 40, well, wait a minute. I missed one page. You're stuck together. So 48. Mm -hmm, i got to go one more page. 35. All right. And 35. Here we are. And it says, It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is there. The Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah. Blessed indeed are those who can say, The Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven names of God in one little group of verses. Psalm 23. One little group of verses has seven names of God in it. Seven names there. Can you imagine that? And there's only six verses. There's only six verses and they have seven different names of God. Where David went from he to thou. He crossed some bridges in this little sign. I love to see this. This is something I love to see. I love to see David. He's on the hillside. And he's in this green pasture. And he can look over on this other side of the mountain. Over we'll say on Mount Horad. And he can see this green pasture over there. Let me tell you what he's got to do. He's got to take his sheep. It's more than a day's journey. He's got to venture into the valley. He's got to cross some fairly swift water with those sheep. And he's got to get them to the other side over there. And meanwhile, while they're in there, they're in harm's way. They're down in the valley where the lions are waiting, where the bears are waiting. And he's got to deliberately go into that valley. And he's got to deliberately figure how to get those sheep across that water without those sheep getting drowned. And then he's going up the hill and he's going to that other green pasture. And he says, and you put me in the green pasture. But he's got to go through that valley. And every time he went off from one mountain to another mountain, he went through a valley of a shadow of death. There were marauders. There were people that knew those shepherds had to come through there. They knew the trail. And they knew that they could knock the shepherd in the head and steal the sheep. 
And if they didn't do anything but sell the sheep and kill them and eat them, they, they, that was all their interest was. It wasn't in raising the sheep. It wasn't in getting the wool. It was getting what they could get for the minute and take it, take it and run with it. And that's what it was about. And so we find out that in David's life, he had to go through these things on a daily basis. But I love the fact that we see in this devotional sign that he not only went through those things, but he got grew closer and closer and closer to the Lord. This was the sixth, remember, the sixth messianic sign of David. The sevenfold ministry had 14 blessings of the Messiah in it for a man who will follow God. Not only I we promised a table prepared before us on a daily basis, but we are prepared to sit down at the great wedding table with the Messiah and with God the Father, with God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, with the 24 elders, with the 12 disciples, and with all of the martyrs that are there. All the martyrs have a special place that are there. All those that were martyred for the name of God and the name of Jesus. Paul, the apostle, before he became Saul, had martyred many of them. Stephen was the first martyr that was uh, from the group that came directly from the Lord. And he was martyred by Paul. And uh, so he'll be there. Uh, what's, what's ironic is as he's there, Paul the Apostle will be there too. <laughs> so, but God's the one that knows how to wash that all out and take care of that. Because if there is none, nada, not one speck of evil or resentment or thought of the past in heaven, there is not one speck. Then there is nothing can be held against anybody when they get to heaven. The only thing you can have as a loss when you get to heaven will be before you get there. Jesus said, He comes and His reward is with Him. That means when you get rewarded for everything you've done on this earth, you will enter heaven with those rewards. Anything that is a loss of rewards that you're going to suffer, you'll suffer them outside of the kingdom of heaven. Because when you get into heaven, those rewards will be there with you. Well, he said, let's not be ashamed. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, let's not mind the enemies that are of the cross. Let's triumph, just as David did. Uh, let none of us that pray, uh, pray in shamity. If, if I'm in a restaurant and I'm going to eat, I'm not going to eat unless I say grace. I absolutely am not going to eat unless I say grace. And that's a triumph. That is a triumph over something. We find those 12 requests of David, by the way, in uh, Psalm uh, 25. That he's asking, O oh Lord, I I'm going to trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Who would triumph over you? Only yourself would allow that if there is somebody. If you're intimidated, you're intimidated by the devil, don't pay any attention to it. Let none who pray be ashamed. Let sinners be ashamed. You pray and let that man that didn't pray be ashamed. If you're in a restaurant, you do your prayer. You say your, son, you say your, <laughs> your grace. And by the way, if you're at home and you're all alone, and you don't say grace, you don't deserve to eat. And as a matter of fact, if you choke to death on something, it's going to be your own fault. Because you don't deserve to eat if you haven't said grace when you're by yourself. He said, let sinners be ashamed. Verse 4, show me your ways. He said, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Remember now, David went from he to thou. And now here we are in Psalm 25. And he's saying, show me, show me your way, Lord. 
Show me your way. I, I'm tired of my way. Show me your way. And uh, so in, in the way of salvation, lead me in the truth. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Verse 5 of, of chapter uh, 25. Thee do I wait all the day. Wow. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies, thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Listen, man's just now catching up with what God has already had. God spread the table. God rolled the red carpet out through his son, Jesus Christ. The red carpet has been rolled out through the blood of Jesus Christ. And you can walk on that carpet as far, as long, as high as you want to go. All you have to do is fall in step and do it. Teach me your paths. Lead me in the truth. Teach me truth, verse 5. Let's look at verse 6. Teach me your paths. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies, thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember, not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. And God did. And you know, through David's life, he made some mistakes. God did not count those mistakes against David. I'm sure David did. He lost one of his children through a mistake. And he lost some other children through some mistakes. But God did not count those against David. He said, David's heart was after me. In spite of the fact that David missed a spot, missed it in some areas, he, he did it. And remember, verse 7, remember not the sins of my youth. Verse 8, teach me truth. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way? He said, and teach me. Now, verse 9, remember me with mercy. He said, the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Do you know that Moses was called the meekest man on earth? <laughs> A man leading two million children of Israel? Across the desert, through across through the Red Sea, across the Jordan River, and God says He was the meekest man that ever lived. Can you can you imagine that? Wow! And and He says in verse ten, verse ten, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep His covenant and His testimonies. Remember, 11 says, Remember not my youthful sin. 12 says, Remember for your goodness sake. We want God to remember us for His goodness sake. For thy sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. David could see that his fleshly side had a lot of iniquity. Yet, his spiritual side was always for the Lord. He had a sixfold blessing in the next few verses. Those who repent and fear God. He will be taught by God. It said, What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Wow. And God is teaching me a lot. In the, in the very present past, God's teaching me a lot. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. God is going to keep us. If you plan on following the Lord, 
Get in the Bible and follow. Our time's come and gone. See you next time. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Bye-bye.